Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We're all aware and we all know that the FIFA 23 market has been crashing because of the panic selling leading up to all of this World Cup content coming to FIFA 23 Ultimate Team. Now, what I want to do today is acknowledge that price drop and again, talk through the current state of the market, but also look ahead towards the end of the week where we maybe could see a market rise with all of the scenarios and factors that are starting to seem to come to life. And especially thinking about what this kind of market crash reminds me of and what it kind of looks like in being a miniature version and a shortened version of the Black Friday market crash that happens every year. And what do we know about the Black Friday market crash? We see panic selling all the way down, prices drop like crazy. Then once Black Friday hits, we see prices rebound a lot on certain areas of the market because people open all those packs, they get a lot of coins, and the demand hits once again. And I think there's going to be a lot of demand hitting this weekend as well. So I want to talk through this and take a look at the market. Now, also, speaking of prices on the market, you're like, Nate, are you making this video today because prices are going up and you want to make sure that we can buy cards before they go up too much? No, that's not this, the, what's going on here. What we're really looking at in the market right now is prices are going up because there's nothing to do and that the panic selling has kind of stopped and there is some demand right there's a little more demand than what there was earlier and there was less panic selling because right now people are finishing their division rivals games to get rewards before the season resets on thursday in two days and to get their milestone games in so we're going to talk about some tips and tricks with the finishing of this season number one stuff to watch out for and of course cover what maybe could be our content today on a tuesday in foot 23 we're going to talk about all that and more but let's start off by talking about this market and really the concept at hand here that what we are really experiencing is like a mini black friday scenario right we're going to take a look at some graphs from last year so let's keep it similar with the same player Ferland Mendy is the guy we're going to kind of dissect his graphs here for a second. Ferland Mendy at the end of October, 91,000 coins. The last two weeks, prices have dropped off. People knowing the World Cup is near, but especially this last weekend with all of the World Cup deep dive, the pitch notes, the information, and a lackluster content time. No real promo, just objectives and SBCs, and multiple ways for E to drain coins off the market through packs and through SBCs themselves we saw prices drop. Everybody remembers this, right? Huge market crashes past weekend were mudded, right? But it really reminds me of a kind of like a shortened version and a mini scenario of Black Friday from what happens every single year, right? Ferland Mendy last year started the end of October at 100,000 coins, dropped off for the entire month of November until we hit the Black Friday, goes from 37K up to 50,000 coins in the next week after that i could take a look at some other more rare cards and show you some more fluctuations of a guy like cordoba going from 530,000 coins down to 420 back up to 511 same thing with rude hullet dropping all the way down from a million to 800k and then rising back up to 920,000 coins the week after why does this bounce back happen after we have all of the crazy amounts of panic selling well it happens because a people are selling 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 they're undercutting each other and they're all worried about this big event that's going to happen in the game they're all worried about whatever it is right now it's the world cup mode it's it's right with the world cup content and all the crazy stuff that could be released with this promo coming up starting this weekend and you're probably going to last for a while but with all of that panic selling and undercutting right now there's so many people i'm sure a lot of you guys in general as well that are just waiting to buy some cards for your team and you're like hey man when can i buy some of these cards back the switch kind of flips once the content that everybody was panic selling for or the fear that everybody had of that was going to make the market drop once that actual content or once that promo actually drops Again, like I said, the switch flips and you usually end up seeing people going back out and buying cards for their teams because a lot of times what people are doing as well and it's happening right now is they're saving packs. Nobody is opening packs at the moment, or at least not very many people are. They're saving packs because there's no special cards in packs. This weekend, when we have those new Foot World Cup heroes in packs, the Marvel items, we've got the new limited time uh, red foot uh, whatever they're called, World Cup cards, and maybe a, a promo as well, all of that kind of happens. And people are excited about the game again. They get back on and they want to buy teams, but they open those packs and that gets more coins onto the market because people are opening tradable packs and getting coins through quick selling and through selling cards in the market. 
that overall brings the value of the market up and brings the buying power of the market up. And you couple in with that increased demand as people are no longer scared to be selling their cards and, and expecting the market to go down, you usually get a market rise. So yes, I do expect a market rise this weekend. It just depends on where, right? Where you wanna focus your buying because I do think there are some cards this weekend that with a lot of the saved up packs, maybe, just maybe, we could see the first lightning rounds of the year. I know that lightning rounds don't ever start until Black Friday, but this is the World Cup mode. EA is gonna go all out for the World Cup. Could we actually get the first lightning rounds of the year this weekend? That would mean a lot of supply. I'm expecting a lot of supply anyway. That does worry me about some parts of the market, like your lower rated gold cards that are not as meta that are going to get kind of hurt by the supply, right? I'd watch out for Kunde. I'd watch out for Tamori. Anthony still being 6,000 coins, probably going to drop in price. Varan, probably going to drop in price. Um, Valverde, probably going to drop in price a little bit, right? Those lower tier gold cards uh, or anything that is lower rated that is in packs, I would worry about. Now, your stuff like Ferlin Mendy, like this guy is almost invincible, right? He still was going for 50K as an 83 rated card last year at, after the Black Friday market crash. He's still 60K right now. You know, some of these guys that have dropped off the biggest percentage points, right? Like this guy's gone from 80,000 coins to 50K. That's that's a huge percentage point drop off in just a, a weekend, right? I like the bounce back opportunity for some of these really meta cards still. I just, I just think you have to be the most careful with the gold cards. Now, a part of the market that I really like for upcoming in this weekend is we're talking about just general card types here are heroes because here is the thing, and it's going to be probably a spur of the moment, last minute decision, or maybe as we get leaks about this later on this week, the leaks are going to impact the market a lot later on this week, by the way, as we talk about timing. Not all of these heroes are getting the World Cup Marvel versions, right? It's only the brand new heroes from these heroes that were, re that were released this year and introduced this year in a foot 23. And the fine print here, as you will notice, says that these heroes will be available in foot across two team releases starting November 11th. So this Friday, not every single one of the foot hero cards that we're expecting to see packable will actually have a card that is in the game and in packs. Now, if a card does get, let's say they put in uh, Dirk Kite's new Marvel Hero World Cup card instead of his base hero card, the new hero one will, of course, or the new World Cup one will replace his base card in packs and the other one will no longer be in packs, which could have you know some market movement potential there as well. And then it says some of them will only be available via SBCs and objective rewards too. So there's always a little bit of caveat with this, but since heroes have been panic sold off so much, let's use it for example here, let's say Yaya Toure brought the most popular and most uh, wanted card for people to pack out of their pre-order pack this weekend as well. Let's say Yaya's card is not one of those that's in packs this Friday. He would probably rebound all the way back up to like 1.1 high million, maybe even 1.2 million coins. And that'd be a card that you could see a tremendous market rise on depending on how things go, right? He was 1.02 yesterday before he continued to rise up. Uh, a decent amount of price. So that's the side of the market that I really like. I like heroes a lot because heroes are just very, very popular this year's game. Um, and a lot of people want to try out all these brand new cards. Now, icons, I like a lot as well because they're just rare. And in general, I always love the out of packs cards, right? Rule breakers. I love the out of position cards. These are going to be a certain type of card that I will closely have my eyes on, even though they've already started to rise, right? Fred's up 20K from his lowest point. Um, Teo Hernandez is up some. Salah, Cancelo, Perisic, Reese James. A lot of these cards have risen up a decent amount from their lowest points of panic selling, what we saw on the weekend. I still think there's opportunity to buy these cards later on this week. And that's what I want to talk about next. The timing, right? Timing is going to be very, very key for the rest of this week on this game. If you're starting to switch your mindset from, okay, now I'm going from being a little bit uncertain about how I think price is going to move on this market to I'm going to start looking at specific cards that either I want for my team or I want to invest in for a potential rise. I'm going to start watching these card prices and look for some panic. That's what I would be doing if I were you. But as we look for some panic throughout the rest of the week this week, what's going to cause people to sell off some of these cards 
um, that you know we have maybe seen rise up a little bit in the past day or two because content's not been that good. Well, I think number one, leaks. And there's gonna be a lot of them later on this week. If we're gonna have a pretty exciting promo Friday, which I do believe EA is gonna wanna start off this Friday with a W set of content, we're getting the World Cup mode tomorrow, right? On Wednesday the 9th is the actual World Cup mode, which again, I also feel like that might be a part of the situation that people don't understand right now is that the World Cup mode is completely separate from World Cup foot content. I, maybe people won't really recognize that until tomorrow, but EA has been talking about that. It's not necessarily a secret. I even played the World Cup mode at the FIFA 23 World Cup launch capture event. There's going to be a special double upload today uh, coming out on the channel as well. So make sure you watch out for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. But there are two standalone modes. And I think once people recognize that this weekend and see that there's no correlation there, that could make some of the market move up. That could help our market moving up type thing. But I really think that the leaks... And I really think that like a loading screen and just hype for everything that's coming on Friday... And maybe even a last minute SBC that EA could drop. I still think there's, especially today, I think today on Tuesday would be one of our last opportunities maybe for EA to drop like a hero pack, an icon pack that we didn't see yesterday. You know, I still think there's going to be opportunities to buy these cards. If you're wanting to buy a hero card, if you're wanting to buy a gold card that is meta um, or especially an out of packs card. I think there's going to be opportunities for a little bit more panic selling, but like, do I expect to see Yaya Toure back at a million coins flat? I, no, I don't. If I saw Yaya Toure, um, and if let's say we knew that Yaya was not going to get his brand new Marvel card impact this weekend, if I saw him back down at like 1.01 or 1.02, which I believe was his legit lowest point in the panic selling this past weekend, I would buy that card. I really would because this guy has so much demand and so much hype. I think that his new card, if it's in packs, would be super expensive because it's a really big upgrade. And if his new card does not come out in the first set of the World Cup Foot Heroes, I think that would make his card rebound back up as well. So I like the Foot Hero cards, some of them, not all of them. I like some of them for a potential rebound. And the thing with golds, and this is where it gets tricky, right? We always love out of packs, right? The safest cards are always the most rare and the most meta. Out of pack special cards, um, hero cards, icons. We like those later on this weekend for some nice rises. Gold cards are interesting because, again, like I mentioned, we're still figuring out this whole FIFA World Cup player item, these limited time cards that are going to have the same or basically the same stats as the gold version, but they're going to be packable as well for players that are making the final squad of their nation's World Cup roster. So a guy like Ronaldo, a guy like De Bruyne, Vinny, Mbappe, Rudiger, these guys are going to make the World Cup rosters, right? They're all going to be playing at the World Cup, and they're going to have red items that will be attainable uh, from packs. Now, we do believe, as we read this more and talk about it more, we still have a lot of questions about this, right? We don't know if they're going to be tradable only, or if they'll be untradable only, or a mix of both. It seems like they might only be untradable, and I don't know if you're even going to be able to turn them into SBCs, because this little thingy right down here, I don't know if it's for show, to make a point that they're limited, or if it's actually going to be on the card, um, you know, it almost looks like a loan, right? So we may not be even able to turn these in. We have a lot to learn about these World Cup limited cards. But realistically, somebody were able to pack a red version of a gold card, right? If you packed a red version of like Ronaldo, you'd rather use the red one than the gold one, right? Just because it looks a little bit cooler. So that's my worry with gold cards this weekend is, you know, a guy like Holland, he's not going to get a red card because he's obviously not in the world cup norway is not qualified so you don't have to worry about it as much there but those world cup limited items do scare me a little bit because it's basically the same version as the gold even if it's untradeable that could cause some people that they pack that item to go then use that special red version instead of the gold that's what worries me a little bit with the golds but i still think that your meta golds after we whatever supply and panic that we have later on this week I still think guys like Mendy and Walker, Militao, Mbappe, Mbappe's down so much, man. Mbappe's 1.26. He was 1.22 yesterday at his low point, right? 1.23, went back up to 1.279. 
Um, like that's that's really really low. I think that Mbappe is going to end up going back up to like 135, maybe even close to 1.4 in a max bounce back situation. Just because, again, like I said, the way this market is really feeling for me is we've had so much panic selling and such a big drop off in the past couple of days. I just feel like we are going to have a bounce back this weekend on certain areas of the market. Now, again, not everywhere, but certain areas of the market. And again, the best advice I can give you is whether you're looking to buy a team and buy cards for your team, or whether you're just looking to purely profit off of this sort of market movement and market swing, I would really look for the most rare, the most popular cards um, that people are going to want to go and buy out and put in their teams. Think about what people are getting this weekend too. They're getting that free World Cup Hero Pack. That's going to impact the market a decent amount, and that's going to impact price in this game. I just sold Kuhl for 230,000 coins literally an hour ago. He's 220. Show me 210, and I'm in. You know, trading right now in this market is actually pretty crazy as well. There's so many fluctuations that you can trade with. We'll talk about that in a second. But start to plan out what cards you maybe want to buy and start to watch their prices as we get leaks. Again, guys, leaks, I think, are going to really continue to cause some panic later on this week with all the information that we maybe learn from those as we get closer to still not knowing everything about what this friday promo is going to bring us with world cup content on fifa 23 so i know i'm talking a lot about everything with the market but i wanted to really spell that out there and kind of hopefully you guys can follow along and understand that train of thought and where i'm thinking this market can go later on this week just because of how much panic selling that we have had um, now let's talk about fodder too because fodder is at a very interesting point after yesterday's content, and we'll kind of transition into talking about yesterday and, and today a little bit. Yesterday, we didn't have one of those big SBCs that we thought we were going to see. Fodder rose up very nicely yesterday as people thought there was going to be an SBC. Take a look at Kings of the Kuman, right? From low 12Ks, maybe 13K, all the way up to about 14. A slight bit of a drop off, but they're still really not that low. 86s are all 13, 13 and a half thousand coins. That's not that low. I think today we and tomorrow we maybe have the last chance at EA releasing some sort of SBC that can make this stuff go up enough in price. So I'm kind of holding on to my 86s still. I'm still holding on and lazy listing some of my fodder. Uh, you know, I'll get a sale every once every couple hours on a, on a lazy list or whatever. You know, I got my 86s up for 17K. I got Kimmich up for 33,000 coins. I'm not trying to sell my 86s for like 25,000 coins. Or anything crazy like that you know i still think that fodder if we get an sbc today could go up a little bit but realistically i think this weekend um i don't know what sbc content we're gonna have that will require higher rated fodder cards we'll have to see of course but um i do think that with a lot of the supply that i'm expecting to see hit the market this weekend a lot of saved up packs a lot of reward um opportunities that people have been able to save up over the past couple weeks before this weekend's promo, I think there's going to be a lot of fodder supply. So I would say that my best advice to you would be sell the fodder if it does go up at all throughout the rest of the next couple of days and then get it out before the weekend because it might get a bit ugly on the weekend depending on how high fodder goes this week, especially on some of your higher tier cards. Like, I mean, I'm a little bit worried about a guy like Benzema or Lewandowski who is up a bit. You know, we like Benzema, I bought at 44, 43,000 coins. I just sold them at 50K. Lewandowski is like 51K as well. Uh, I think it's it's pretty safe to take the cash on those earlier and then look for a maybe potential reinvestment on the weekend after a lot of that supply has hit. Now, let's talk about today's content on Tuesday a little bit and just kind of the content in general, uh, because yesterday we finally had the 83 plus packs by specific nation, France, England, Germany upgrade. This one's way expensive, man. I don't know what in the world's going on here. An 82 rated squad with an 83 overall player. You have to turn in. A full squad of 82s and one player has to be an 83 to get a one player 83 plus pack that is not good value at all the other one's great value 83 plus brazil argentina spain but you know why it's good value right because spanish walkouts or spanish boards every time you pack a board it's spanish so that's a bit unfortunate to have that there yesterday we literally had like nothing else i think there was the the ea sports um, you know, the swap token that you could get in here. But then other than that, we didn't even have a new dynamic duo and we had another leak for a dynamic duo. We had the Korean dynamic duo of Kang Lee and Dong Jun Lee and it wasn't dropped. So I'm a bit confused. 
because EA broke their own pattern yesterday by not releasing a dynamic duo. So I'm really not too certain of what's going on there. We also had a flashback SBC for Kagawa leaked yesterday. Of course, this card does not look that fantastic, but if EA gives him a very, very nice upgrade, that would be great. This would be a FIFA legend card that so many people would like to have for some past and present teams. That would be a freaking W if EA juiced this Kagawa card up, gave him a nice work rate upgrade, right? He needs that high low, I think. And then some insane stat boost. That'd be just a fun card. Hopefully it's cheap. Kind of like Higuain vibes. I mean, not an end of an era, of course, but the same sort of vibe as Higuain, to be completely honest, uh, in terms of an SBC like that. So that's, I mean, Tuesday content today, maybe one of those two, maybe nothing of those at all. Really, I would say, guys, start watching Twitter for the leaks because I really feel like the, today on Tuesday could be the day where they start to heat up. And then maybe Wednesday or Thursday, we continue on with those. But, you know, content wise, I'm not expecting a ton, but hey, we expected something yesterday and EA dropped nothing. So maybe we'll expect nothing today and EA will drop something. Maybe that's how we can set our expectations and we'll see how it goes. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is, like I said, the demand for right now gameplay with the season ending, with Rivals Rewards important, and with Foot Champions qualification. As you guys are maybe like, man, there's not a ton to do. Maybe you're playing managerial masterpiece or Rivals or whatever it is to get some rewards, get packs, to get qualified for Weekend League. I think I saw this tweet yesterday from Bateson. I think it's a very, very good point, and I want to share with you guys and give him the credit as well because it's a very good tweet. Make sure you qualify for Weekend League before Thursday this week because if you don't, all the Rivals points are reset with a new season and you'd have to play Rivals to get enough points to qualify for Foot Champs um, before you could then qualify for Foot Champs. So to save yourself some stress and some time, try to get those Rivals games in sooner rather than later so then you can get enough Champs points to go qualify for Champs and then get your weekend league, basically your token, right? Like right now, you can see... Um, I have a champs token ready to go for champs finals. I should be able to carry this champs token over with me um, into the actual weekend league. So if you qualify before Thursday at Rivals Rewards, you should be good to go. Um, I mean, technically, if you want to really sweat it out, you could get three wins in champs qualies and not qualify, but still get some rewards. And then after the rewards reset, uh, you could grind it all out again and then go for getting enough uh, points or getting another set of rewards by playing champs qualifiers, but that's pretty sweaty. Uh, I mean, if you've got the time for it, you can go for it. That's a little bit of a workaround, but it's not worth it too much in my opinion. Also, we don't have a ton of information on how the whole rivals reset's gonna be. We assume it'd be like last year, you'd go down two divisions and then you'd be working your way back up. Really not sure how it's gonna go. And then of course we had the season one rewards in here, which for me, I'll be getting a 100K pack with tradable. So, it's only untradeable rewards. Last year, there was a bunch of panic selling for this. We'll take a look at the market a bit more on Wednesday, uh, maybe even tomorrow, but as well, and what to expect with that. But those are honestly just gonna be more packs that people will save for the upcoming promos and everything that's coming out this Friday for the World Cup content on FIFA. So that's kind of the biggest info and stuff that I can give you right now on the market. Again, yesterday was really a great day to make coins, but we kind of had to realize that in real time. I tried Jerd Mole yesterday. This card was pretty fun to use. He was actually pretty fast. I was semi, um, I was pretty happy with how fast he was. He was pretty fun to use. Um, honestly, I only made like 20K on that card. I really don't care though. We made a lot of coins yesterday. Um, I actually think I made it somewhere around like 100, 125,000 coins. So I will take that. We're starting to dig back up out of the depths. I have about 1.7 mil now. Uh, still have a lot of fodder left. And I think I have one other card. No, I basically just have a lot of fodder um, and some duplicates at the moment. So we're probably sitting on somewhere around like 1.9 million coins somewhere in there. If I'm being completely honest, um, but we're going to try to get that back up to 2 million coins before the weekend so that we have a decent amount of coinage to play with. Uh, but if you're trading on the market, I love the rare cards, the heroes, the icons, the stuff that fluctuates a lot. Those are going to be the cards like we just looked at that Harry Cool card was kind of low. These are going to be the types of cards that can make you coins when the market is kind of dead and quiet like this. These are the cards that move the most and give you the best potential to make some quick flip opportunities on this game. So Tuesday today, yeah, guys, really don't exactly know what's going to happen. 
Um, I mean, EA, if you want to drop us a surprise, we wouldn't complain by any means. Drop us something crazy. Drop us a hero pack. Drop us an icon pack. Let us cash out in some fodder. Let us enjoy our profits. Then we'll hop into the weekend feeling a bit better. Uh, but maybe that's not going to be the case. We'll just have to see. We're going to take it day by day. But seriously, start to watch out for the leaks. There's going to be a lot to talk about later on this week, I think about World Cup content and watch out for a double upload today with some insider look into the World Cup edition of the World Cup mode in FIFA 23 Ultimate Team. So if you enjoyed today's video, smash a thumbs up on it. If you have any questions, drop them down below. I'll be in the comments. And of course, subscribe if you're new. It's been Nathan Foot Account and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.